Thank you for joining us on this Sunday as we worship the risen Lord. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday after Easter. Uh, I'm Pastor Beth Rossler, and I'm the pastor of the Duke Center and Rue United Methodist Churches. Thank you again for joining us. I have a couple of short announcements. The first is, is that annual conference will be held virtually this year on June 17th and 18th. And we're looking for a delegate who can represent our church charge as it is held virtually and on the computer. So if you're up to that task, please let me know. Also, I'm considering changing our current phone prayer chain system into a text into a text chain where everyone on the list would get a text with all the details of the prayer request. There would be no need to, to call the next person in this way. So if you're on the prayer chain currently, would you please let me know if that works for you? And let me also know if you'd like to be added to our prayer chain list. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Holy and almighty God, with Christians around the world, we live in the days after the resurrection and we celebrate and continue our celebrations together. But like the apostles and the disciples who gathered at the tomb, we too are uncertain of what life should look like. We want to believe with all of our hearts the story that we have heard, but so often our daily life gets in the way of our faith. So help us, God, by the power of your spirit, help us to walk through each day's obstacles so that we see them not as causes for doubt, but as barriers that can be lifted by our faith in you. God of the risen Jesus, hear our prayers. And God of the journey, we praise you and thank you for gathering us together to worship, to celebrate, and to lift your name on high. Lord, give us sight beyond our usual sight and give us faith that is strong and deep. God of the risen Jesus, hear our prayers. Today, Lord, we take time to pray for those who struggle with health issues. Lord, there are many in our own circles that are still struggling with COVID, and I especially lift up to you Katie and baby Paisley, who was born on Easter Sunday. Lord, be with them. Give them both healing and strength. I pray for a friend named Tim, and Lord, ask that you would surround he and his family as they worry and they wait to see what will happen. Lord, in their health issues, be with them. Lord, we also pray for others who are struggling with health and lift them up to you. We pray for those who are grieving, for those who are struggling to find the joy right now and are lacking hope, who are lacking faith who are lacking love. And God, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to bring them comfort and care and lift them up out of the places that they need to, right, need to, into the places that they need to be right now. Lord, we lift up these concerns and many others and ask that you would uh, hear our prayers. And we trust that you do because you are the risen Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that last week with Easter was our big celebration and everybody realizes um, the big Easter holiday that it is uh, Resurrection Sunday in the church as we celebrate Jesus's power over death, that he is alive. But actually the celebration really continues for many faiths, for many Christians into this week. Um, and the week following Easter has been observed by Christians as days of joy and laughter. And it should be joyous because we're celebrating the risen Jesus. But the extra days of celebration were inspired by early Christian pe preachers who envisioned the risen Christ laughing at the devil because, G because God had played the ultimate joke on him as people thought he was dead, but he wasn't really, that Jesus had risen from the dead. And so some traditions celebrate um, the, the joke that God played with laughter and funny jokes and stories together where they uh, might get together and dance and eat. In other traditions, it's celebrated on the Sunday after Easter. And today it's often known as Holy Humor Sunday. But it really has roots throughout history. And in fact, in, one, uh, in the 15th century, in one country, Bavaria, they used to celebrate this Sunday as the Rhesus Paschalis, which means God's joke or the Easter laugh. And not only would priests include amusing stories and jokes in their sermons, but after the service, people would get together to play practical jokes on each other. 
sometimes throwing water at each other or telling funny stories. It must have gotten out of hand, or perhaps this pope was just a little bit cranky, but Pope Clement X in the 17th century actually outlawed the observance of the Rhesus Paschalis. And so not everybody has heard about this week of celebration or this day of Holy Humor Sunday. But in recent years, a group of Christians called the Fellowship of Mary Christians began encouraging people to resurrect some of these traditions and to choose to celebrate the gifts of laughter and joy. So I hope that you can share some laughter with your family and friends today. Perhaps you can tell a joke and get a laugh or play a safe practical joke on someone. Or perhaps you just simply want to share some funny stories or share some memories that make you laugh. Or perhaps you just need to do some of the things that bring you joy today. I'm going to share one joke today. Um, it is about a group of young kids in a Sunday school class. The Sunday school teacher asked her young children in, on the Sunday before Easter if they knew what was going to be happening on Easter Sunday and why it was so important. One little girl enthusiastically waved her hand and said, I know. Easter is when the whole family gets together and eats turkey and sings songs about pilgrims. And the teacher shook her head and said, no, that's not Easter. A second little young child raised their hand and said, I know what Easter is. Easter is when you get a tree and decorate it and give gifts to everybody and, and you sing carols. And the teacher said, no, that's not it. Finally, a third young student spoke up and said, I know. Easter is when Jesus was killed and put in a tomb and left for three days. The teacher was so relieved that she thought to herself, oh, thank goodness somebody knows. But as young ones are known to do, the student kept going and continued. Then everybody gathers at the tomb and waits to see if Jesus comes out. And if he sees his shadow, he has to go back inside and we have six more weeks of winter. I hope that you are able to find some joy and laughter today and share it with others because those things are contagious. Our scripture today comes from John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. After Jesus had spoken his last words from the cross, he breathed his last his body was taken down from the cross and was buried in a tomb that Joseph of, Joseph of Arimathea had graciously provided. His burial was done quickly as the Sabbath was approaching. But the words from the cross were not Jesus' last words, nor was the tomb the last place that Jesus would be found. The amazing, powerful, and joyous message of Easter is that there were words after the last words. Jesus added a P.S. to what the world thought was the end of his message. In the Gospel of John, we hear that it was still dark out when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. There she discovers that the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb was empty. She runs to tell the disciples about what she's found. Peter and 
the other disciple, who we presume is John, discover that Mary's telling the truth. They discover that the tomb is empty and that the grave clothes are lying inside. But the two disciples go back to where they had been staying while Mary stays near the tomb. All of them are confused and the, at the mysteries that they've seen. Mary Magdalene had been devoted to following Jesus. You see, Jesus had freed her from seven demons and had dramatically changed her life. He had healed her and he had forgiven her. And so she became one of several women who were in the inner circle of Jesus' followers. The Gospel of Luke tells us that the women helped to support Jesus and, that the, and the disciples out of their own means. They were important to the ministry of Jesus. We also know that Mary Magdalene is present at Jesus' crucifixion and at his burial. She has not turned away from the man who changed her life. Mary Magdalene is the first one up in the morning and the first one to think of what she could be doing for Jesus. Jesus was buried quickly to avoid working on the, pa on the Sabbath, and now the Sabbath is over. The women had spices and oils that they wanted to put on Jesus' body. So before the sun is up, Mary Magdalene is at the garden where Jesus is buried. The darkness of the early morning seems to be symbolic. It reminds us of how Jesus' followers are feeling, that his death has brought a darkness to their mood. Not only is there sadness, but there's confusion as well. They had all settled into routines of what life looked like while traveling with Jesus as he taught. And all of that had changed dramatically in the last few days. Their hopes and dreams for what life was supposed to look like were shattered on the cross. And then the stone rolled over the grave brought the shadows and darkness into stark reality. Now, no one knows what's going on. As you walk through these verses, if you listen, you hear a refrain of, I don't know. In verse 2, we hear, we don't know where they laid him. And in verse 9, they still did not understand. And in verse 13, I don't know where they've taken him. Verse 14, she did not realize. Every one of them is in the dark. Peter and the other disciple began to run in the dark when they're trying to process the feelings of this bewildering experience. They're, they're still running kind of blindly in the dark. And even when they get to the tomb and are confused by what they find, they seem to ask each other, what in the world is going on? It creates a picture of the disciples scrambling around, out of breath, running, racing, all amidst the felt absence of Jesus. Have you ever raced around in the dark trying to process the what in the world is it that just happened kind of moments? Mary is in the dark. She's in the dark weeping. And when the scriptures say weeps, it's not just a trickle of tears down Mary's face, but the word that has the idea of wailing, of really crying out deeply and, and deep emotions being poured out. Like Mary, have you ever wept in the dark? I know that there are times when I have, that there are dark moments of the unknown where all we can do is simply cry out. Mary not only weeps in the dark, but she's humbled by the dark. She actually has to keep saying it over and over again. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know where they've taken him. We don't know where he is. Mary has to confess her lack of confidence, and she has to confess her lack of knowledge and understanding. She has to ask for help in the dark. In verse 15, she says, Sir, please tell me. One of the things that you and I probably hate the most is being humbled by our circumstances and having to ask for help. Whether it's having to ask for a hand up or having to ask for help to understand what's going on. It is humbling and it's hard for us to do. 
Sometimes in our situations, we're more like Peter and John, where we've missed the answers along the way. Uh, verse 9, in the midst of their story, says, They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Sometimes we don't understand, and sometimes we've missed the things that could have been teachable moments for us to reach out to God. And sometimes we're just lost. And we're probably in those situations more often than we like to admit. Sometimes we don't even like to admit that we need help. We just keep struggling on our own. The two disciples flee from, seem to flee from the situation. But Mary Magdalene chooses to be able to stay and to confront her own feelings. The humble brings her to ask for help. And even though she continues to weep, she chooses to stay. And because she chooses to stay and to confront those own feelings and to humble herself and to ask for help, Mary doesn't stay in the dark. As the story goes on, we know that the sun must be coming up. That physical darkness fades, but so does the darkness of the unknowns. Because as she's there weeping, she looks back into the tomb and she sees that there are two angels where Jesus was, once had laid. They ask her why she's crying, and as soon as Mary Magdalene states the truth of her own situation, Jesus appears. But Mary thinks that he's the gardener until Jesus calls her name. And then the lights go on because Mary recognizes that voice. She knows that it's Jesus' name because no one says her name quite like Jesus. He's the good shepherd and he knows his sheep and the sheep recognize his voice. And suddenly we begin to see in the dark a new courage that Mary is being transformed from the inside out. There's much in her situation that hasn't changed, but the light has dispelled the darkness and the shadows. Mary Magdalene sees everything differently, and Jesus' presence changes everything for her. Jesus has called her by name, and now the darkness is fading. I think it must have been tough for Mary. She had a lot to try to explain to the disciples, and must have been hard to get them to understand. And even when we go through circumstances, we need to know that the world might not understand. But when you see Jesus in the midst of the darkness, everything changes because he is the light of the world. That darkness fades and you have faith in the one who can guide you and lead you, that you know in the midst of the tears that you can keep asking, that you can keep knocking, that you can keep seeking out Jesus. Because Jesus knows you, and he knows what your situation is, and he knows what you need. As I was thinking about it, there's something that happens at the tomb. And it's amazing that this happens at the tomb. This place where the darkness was the darkest for Mary Magdalene. It's where death had happened. It's where dreams died and hopes were shattered. It's where confusion and anxiety took over as Jesus was put in the tomb and the stone was rolled over it. It was in this darkest of darkness that resurrection also happened. That Mary Magdalene, who was once a broken woman, but had been healed by Jesus, was also broken again by life and death and circumstances that she didn't understand. It's there that Jesus spoke her name. It's a reminder that the darkness could not win. Jesus speaks our name. He changes us. He gives us courage to face our circumstances. He gives us renewed faith. He gives us light to lead the way. This is grace and good news for today. This is the resurrection that can happen today. May you listen for Jesus to call your name, to remind you that he is there. And may you call out to him, humble ourselves, and ask for help. Lord God, whatever circumstances we're facing today, we call on you. We thank you that you know us and you know what we need. And so we bring it to you today. 
And Lord, in the quiet, we also listen for you to speak to our hearts, to say our names and to remind us of your presence, to remind us that you are still there. Lord, light be our light in the darkness, we pray today. Amen.